Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Today's going to be pretty casual. I'm going to do more of like a vlog style. I have a shoot for my documentary film that I'm working on, I'm trying to piece a few different things together. Uh, and I realized that I needed some more interview footage to kind of tie everything in. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm meeting up with uh, one of my buddies, Rob. He's a fantastic uh, director, as well as a uh, cinematographer, a grip. He's been in the game for a long time. He's coming to help me out on this shoot. Uh, heading over to Camarillo to a supplement shop. So I'm just kind of getting some things together right now uh, before we head out. So I've got my iPad pretty much all the way charged 100%. I use my iPad on set quite a bit. I use this app right here, the Axoon app. And with this Axoon transmitter, I'm able to use my full iPad as a, basically a director's monitor. And since I'm the director and DP and producer of this small uh, film, I kind of need to do everything. So it definitely helps out to use this iPad as that kind of a tool. All right. Getting set here, I'm proxying some footage, some Blackmagic RAW footage that I'm going to color grade and drop into my reel. I've been trying to update my reel for 2023. Uh, it's taken quite some time and it's really just the hardest part about making a reel is dumping all the footage into your timeline or into your gallery and just being able to have all the material to work with. I have some stuff here. That's just kind of laid out. I have this Sony A6500, Sony A6500. I've had this camera for, I don't know, I wanna say six years or so. Uh, it's been a fantastic camera. It just has some limitations. It has a micro HDMI port, uh, which is not the greatest. I'm kind of tired with the micro HDMI port and having to use like, you know, some kind of an adapter or also the battery life is terrible. So I use like this, uh, you know, dummy battery or, you know, I'd have to just make certain things work. It always needs to be rigged up with a cage. Um, so I am gonna try to go ahead and sell this because, uh, I don't know, I just wanna upgrade. I'm taking a look at the FX3 and thinking that maybe the FX3 with a similar setup, hopefully this top handle will fit on the FX3 and also be able to use this 16 millimeter Sigma lens with the moment variable ND. And I think that will be a pretty good setup on the FX30, which is more of like a cinematic video kind of camera anyway. Sigma has great autofocus and I think that'll be a good setup. So pretty much keeping all my lenses, I have another 30 millimeter Sigma lens and then just gonna swap out this body. Uh, I'm gonna send it into this company I found online. So I found this company online, it's called KEH. Uh, basically you can like put in your camera equipment and they buy like some of your old gear. So I got a quote from them for this a6500, uh, and I, you know, filled it out and I got a packing slip and I'm just going to send it into them and hopefully get some cash, uh, for my old camera. And I'm going to put that towards, uh, payment, maybe on the FX 30. So just trying to get cleaned up here before I walk out the door. Um, for a while, if you watch any of my other videos on my channel, I, uh, you know, I usually try to make more polished, professional looking videos because, you know, I kind of want to portray myself as a professional and show only things that are looking really good. And I don't really show a whole lot of behind the scenes or vlog style like content. Uh, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you see that I post more like raw stuff, more behind the scenes, that type of deal. Um, but I think that on YouTube, I'm probably going to be doing more of this like iPhone footage type of vlogs just because it's so easy. I always have my iPhone in my pocket and it's a lot easier to edit and shoot on the iPhone and upload on the iPhone. Uh, I started following people like uh, Morefort, Morefield Visuals. If you guys don't know who Morefield Visuals is, I, I highly recommend checking him out. He uh, has a really cool YouTube channel. He started it a while back. I've been following him from the beginning. And uh, he's picking up some really good traction. He's in Florida. I'm from Florida. I uh, just got really inspired by his vlogs. So hoping to do something similar by just having a more organic, raw type of a vlog. Hope you guys enjoy. Okay, mini tutorial. If you shoot on Blackmagic cameras, what you should be doing, first thing, is this. Color space transform. Uh, I shoot Blackmagic 
Gen 5 Color Science. I do input gamma, black magic design film as my input gamma. I go out to Rec 709 and then Rec 709A. Look with just one node. You're adding back your saturation and your contrast. It's a really good starting point to get that saturation and contrast back in your image. So just going over my stuff one last time. All of the 6K Pro, a couple lenses, transmitter, all my other AKS for the shoot, and then all my boom setup and XLR audio stuff, a little lav, and cards for everything, and extra hard drive for the B cam. I'm gonna be shooting on another 6K Pro. So yeah, I think we're good to go. So I just got here to the location a little bit early, uh, just so I can kind of scout everything out. I haven't really been to this location before, so uh, I'm not quite sure where I want to put the cameras or how everything's going to work. So uh, I just stopped here to get some food and recharge before the shoot and just make sure that I have everything dialed in. Um, yeah, and just make sure I'm ready. Uh, this week, what's going on? I had a producer contact me this morning uh, regarding a couple of shoots for next month, three shoots. It's like a football style, like uh, interviews. Um, I don't do too many sports things, but interviews, definitely love doing interviews. Um, you know, sit down, multi-cam kind of stuff. Uh, sort of like what I'm doing today, just different subject matter. So I responded to that and I'm waiting to hear back from an, uh, an email from that to see if that job happens and what the rate is and all the information. But uh, yeah, got that in the mix. Uh, tomorrow, I'm on a shoot. I'm actually doing the, a key grip roll and on a movie. It's a narrative feature. And I guess we're just doing like a pickup shot that I guess they already shot the movie. So they're just coming back just to do a pickup. It's a nighttime exterior. And we're just uh, doing recreating the scene to the best we can to make it match kind of what it was. So I have that coming up and I think that'll round out my April and we'll see what I have coming up in May. Um, April has been a decent month, hasn't been too slow. Um, seems like it's starting to pick up going into summer. Hopefully, hopefully things pick up. I'm trying to get the ball rolling. Uh, hopefully these vlogs help out, let people know I'm out here. I'm available for work, uh, you know. Just trying to get my name out there, trying to pick up on uh, any type of shoots that are are going on and see see what what we can make happen, you know? So just looking around the location, seeing which is the best direction to film from. Got some of our gear laid out. So once we got all the gear loaded in from the car, I uh, just took a few minutes to take a look around the store and just kind of see what my best angle was and which direction I wanted to shoot. And then I started building the camera. I kept it pretty simple. Uh, just did a follow focus off of a small rail and then I ran off house power. Uh, my buddy, Rob, he came to help me out. He was my B camera operator for this shoot. Um, and then he also has a 6K Pro. So we both had the same camera and they matched really well. And he had the camera on a slider. I use this app called CADRAGE, and it's basically a director's viewfinder and allows me to see the different focal lengths before I set up the camera. It's great. Hurts. Good job here. Okay, so here's a little breakdown of the setup that we ended up with. I had for a little edge light, I had the 60X up in the ceiling. I had a Quasar tube, a 600D keying through this uh, big six by of magic cloth. And then we had the two 6K Pro cameras. This is my B angle, it's a close up shooting on the shadow side and we're on a slider. This is with the 85 millimeter uh, Miki lens. Fantastic lens, beautiful depth of field. Love this lens. Uh, got a little bit of parallax going back and forth. 
And then as you can see, here's the 60X. We just uh, put it up into the drop ceiling with a Cardellini. And here's the 600D behind that uh, magic cloth. that just kind of armed it out, T-boned it. And then I have a little bit of neg fill on the shadow side, just a five in one reflector. And uh, yeah, a boom over the top going into the camera. And that was it. Put a little blanket down on the ground to uh, absorb some of the reflections in the room. And I see my family, um, I love them, like everybody, uh, coming out of a party school, Miami High. And then um, when I was 21 years old, I got in a major motorcycle accident and I decided I was gonna quit drinking. And so once I did that, my life completely changed around. So I actually literally, for people who are listening, it's, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Um, that's one of uh, Roy's goals too, is kind of like inspire others. Yes. Like be, you know, kind of be the family guy that like, you know, the dad it, to his kid that he didn't get to be. Yeah. And then also like, you know, sort of like what you were able to do for him. Like All right, guys. Well, that's a quick look at the interview setup for my documentary film. Um, one thing that I do after every shoot is I make sure that I go ahead and I grab all the media or the cards out of all the cameras before I leave the shoot, uh, whether it's CF cards, I record it onto one CF Express card, and then also a uh, T5, a Samsung T5 drive. And I just made these little like uh, folders, these little uh, like carrying cases. I just got them from the dollar store. They're like little pencil holders and they have a zipper on them. And they're really fantastic for just kind of organizing cables and whatnot. And I just go ahead and I stash my media in there. And uh, when I get back to my edit bay, everything's all organized in, in one place. And uh, yeah, I highly recommend using these things. Uh, once again, I'm Scott Stevenson. Thanks for watching. And I hope you guys learned something. I'll see you in the next one.